Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for listening or watching wherever you find yourself today. Um, I am so excited to have my good friend, the CEO of Keeping Current Matters, David Childers, with me on the show. Um, David, before I introduce you, I want to just say, here we are, the midway point of 2024, a year that not many expected. We had early, you know, predictions for interest rates in the fives, that there was going to be more right. movement, there was going to be more listings. Uh, and one could argue it is just so noisy right now, certainly here in the U.S., definitely for my friends in Canada, election cycles, interest rates, inflation, housing shortage. You know, uh, I think the elections are just taking up too right. much of the news. Then you look at like the thousand watt surveys, which I know you look at and I look at the 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 amount of confusion amongst consumers today feels like. For a segment of them, probably the ones that are most likely to buy and sell in the short term, are more confused or have more biases than I probably ever read about. So, David, I thought today we would unpack what do you say, like, you know, using, you know, you and I and our, our mentor, Steve Harney, God bless him, like the, the significance importance of being the knowledge broker today. What do we say to buyers? What do we say to sellers? And then what's the forecast for the balance of the year? I think that would bring my listener today a lot of value. But first and foremost, David, hi, happy June or May, wherever we are. How are you? Give us a little State of the Union at Keeping Current Matters. Well, uh, it's good to be here together and, and good to be with you as always. And listen, as you were saying that, first of all, I couldn't agree more that, that there's a lot of noise. And guess what? Good news. Yeah. We have a chance to step in, be the knowledge broker, clarify yeah. things yeah. for people that we work with. Right. And yeah, I mean, we started off, let's, let's, let's talk about that. We started off at KCM talking about the year of the fives yep. and oh, by the way, the fed comes back in they're like, Hey, guess what? We, we don't think we're where we need to be. Nope. Um, apparently uh, Iran sends 200 drones towards Israel. And, and, and I don't, I don't say that in a, in a light way, these no. events have a massive yes. impact on what we, what we do. And they, they, now uh, they create uncertainty in the world. There is a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Yeah. There is no doubt. And, and it, you know, I was just thinking, as you said that, you know, it's been um, a couple of months uh, since Steve passed. And that was certainly a shock for us at, at KCM. Um, and uh, but yet his legacy, I believe, will be defined by his belief that he would always say to me, I know he said it to you a, a, a hundred times, Tom. That in times of uncertainty, people follow the certain. So, Bingo. so my Bingo. here's my perspective and my question, even to to somebody listening: What are you certain of, yep. and what do you expect? What yes. do you expect? And I'll tell you what I expect right now. As we sit in the, in the midpoint of the year, I expect the second half of the year to be busier than the first half. And I'll and I'll give you know, some, some facts to, to support that over the next, you know, few minutes that we spend together. But I think this, this is the time right now to be certain about what you believe, be certain about what you're putting out in the market and, and, and do it at a more frequent pace. I agree with you hundred percent. The caveat that I would have for my friend listening is um, check yourself before you film anything, check yourself. You might have some significant biases or beliefs or hallucinations about what you believe to be true. And you might just be headline reading. You might yeah. just be, I'll just say not going deep enough or looking as my mentor, Mike Vance would always say to me, the arc of perspective. You need to sometimes step back from, you know, like I'm looking right at my MLS, my market. This is what's happening on my last appointment. And actually getting a deeper, wider perspective of what's going on inside the marketplace. Because, you know, if you come out and say it's the end of the world and first time buyers are never going to buy and the veterans are screwed because, you know, the, we haven't solved for inside of the end, like you, you're, you're creating noise. And now I'm not asking you to be Pollyanna. And I know you're not either, David, like on the contrast, I'm not asking you to be like, everything is rosy and the market's amazing and you're going to do great and home prices. And no, I think you need to have a I almost said fair and balanced, but that, you know, whatever, the, the, that media company versus the other media company, I don't even know. But I think you have to have a balanced approach to say, look, 
you know, here's what's going on locally. Here's what's going on nationally. This is my prediction after my, you know, 20 months or 20 years or five decades in the business. And, you know, what I know is housing is always going to be in vogue, but every market is complicated. And we're in one of those complicated markets, again, dependent upon are you a first-time buyer? Are you a veteran buyer? Are you a lakefront, oceanfront, who be do buyer? Are you a seller? But we're going to unpack all that. Like, so let, let's go to the, let's go to the first thing. You intrigued me this morning in our conversation prior to this of, you know, Tom, I'm talking about one of your favorite subjects, which is what to say to buyers today that are maybe on the fence or just confused. Share some insight there. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let me say something before we get into that, sure. because it's it's built upon a belief that I have and that we've been working on at KCM with a lot of KCM members. And that is, and I want to go back to what you said, you have to have a discipline in this market yep. to acquire knowledge. Yes. That is above anything else. And that's not knowledge of, I'm going to flip on the news at night, or I'm going to listen to what somebody said in the office. That is what, what you're accumulating knowledge. And I think there are three areas that you have to become uh, consistent at. First, industry knowledge. You mentioned 1,000 watt. Nobody better than to give the pulse of our industry and consumers relative to housing than 1,000 watt. You know, what, what are the sources that you're gathering industry knowledge from? Two, you have to have an understanding today, and this was nice to have, I believe, several years ago, yeah. of the national real estate market. Because every time your consumer turns on the TV, reads news in an app, does whatever they're going to do, they hear about national real estate trends. They hear about yeah. prices. They hear about affordability. They hear about whatever it is on a national level. And then third, you must be the local expert. Yes. You have to. You have to understand what's happening locally in your market. And I, I, you know, even as I say that right now and you and I talk, there's a lot of noise in the world and that's a lot. It takes more today to make that impact than it took 24 months ago. I believe that with all my heart. And so you have to accumulate that knowledge and have a consistent discipline. You're going to say something about that. No, I just want to, I just want to acknowledge like for the person listening right now, and again, we'll get to the, what to say to buyers, but while you were talking, David, what was going through my head is, okay, where do I go? I go to John Burns. I go to Ivy Zellman. I go to KCM. I go to housing wire. I go to thousand watt. And the smart agent listening or watching right now, after you go through all those, you, you say, act like. Housing Wire's best editor. Act like the team at Thousand Watt. Act like the best of KCM. Act like John Burns. Act like Ivy Zellman. And then here is all of the sales that have occurred in my marketplace directly from the MLS. You drop it into chat GPT-4 and you say, help me understand the trends. Help me understand the nuances. What are the subtle differences? What are the things that I could share with my customers that they haven't even imagined about our marketplace? And I think if you pull from a wide enough variety of sources and you push, you know, the modern day GPTs to really dig deeper, you can find some really interesting insights that are both for and against buying, for and against totally. selling. Okay. And I think that's where you win. And I'm, I'm not against chat GPT-4, but let me say this, yeah. because I have to say this. Yeah. That is exactly what we do at KCM. We survey I everything. I know. We look at it. You can do it. It's going to take you seven or eight hours a day to do it, but let us do that for you. I used to always joke around. Yes. I'm like, we'll do it for $39 a month. If you find somebody cheaper, let me know because I may <laughs> sign up for their service. Yes, yes exactly. But, I'm but signing seriously, up. That's, what, that's what we do. It, but yes. then there's a second and a third component to this. Yes. Once you're doing that, you have to then be able to share that knowledge. Yes. Right. We live in a world where we can accumulate knowledge and we can acquire it. But if we don't share it, then who, who what's it worth? I right. Agree. And you can share it one to one. You can share it one to many. And in and, and all the things that we know, we can even in today's world broadcast ourselves. That's right. Right. We, we have that advantage and in, in be able to do that. And then there's there's actually a third layer to this. So if you accumulate knowledge, you share it, you have to actively and consistently engage, right? So if I understand what's going on with prices or I understand what's going on with inventory, or I understand what's going on with mortgage rates or insert whatever topic it is we're talking about, then I want to actively engage on it. You know, it's what you and Jimmy have worked 
right. and seen phenomenal results. It's what we're going to work on on the listing challenge, right? Yeah. Of how do I engage based on the knowledge that I've acquired? And, and the agents that are doing that well are the knowledge brokers in today's Bingo. market. That is the, that, that is, is by far what I see winning uh, as we talk to agents that are out there in the content game and the spectrum of the content game, right? Some that are killing it. Some that are like, I share stuff, but I'm not even sure what I share. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So I got so many insights I want to share, but let's get to, so I'm, I'm listening right now. I'm working with a bunch of buyers. I'm getting a wide range of, you know, worries, concerns, ambitions, excitement. Um, what's the conversation we should, we should be having today with buyers to help settle any nervousness or concern about buying a home today? Sure. So I think there's um, probably the predominant concern that we see in surveys is uh, along the lines of prices. So Fannie Mae does a survey every month and they, they say to consumers, what do you believe will happen to home prices over the next uh, 12 months? Yeah. Typically or traditionally, that number hovers around eight to ten percent, right? You know, one out of ten says I think they're going to go down, and, and that's the essence of it. Do you think they will will go down? That number hovers right now around twenty five percent. So, depending on the on the month, two times, maybe three times, what is normal in the market. So you have to back up and you have to say, okay, what? Why is that? It's because the consumer today comes with a lens that is informed by the last three years. Yes. Right? A, 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 an enormous run up in prices across the country. There's not a market that somebody's listening to right now. And, and you, you know, they are like, that didn't happen in our market. It happened in every market, right? Yes. yes. Uh, unbelievable price appreciation. If we're honest, unhealthy price appreciation. Yeah. Right. And I think some of this is when when you talk about we don't need to be Pollyanna, we need to acknowledge that. Right. So you take unhealthy price appreciation. The consumer has in the rearview mirror 2008. and They're like, ah, feels like that. Now, under the surface, very different market fundamentals that we can explain if we understand them. But then they go, OK, well, the home down the street is worth this. There's no way that keeps up. There's no way that house is worth that. And so who wants to buy something in a, in a market where you feel like it might not be worth as much in one, two, or three years is what it is today. And so I think being eloquent on the price conversation is critically important. Now I can bring you all the forecast. I can bring you what's happening with prices. Right. All of that, but I think that's a core issue that maybe is vocalized and maybe it's not at times. You know, it's interesting as you say that because you know, obviously, I read all those uh, you know industry insights starting with KCM, and and I will tell you, if you get outside of that, you just get into the anecdotal, you know, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, you know, whoever, you know, CNN Financial, whatever it may be, they're all saying the same thing. We were hoping that home prices would go down, but it looks like five point six percent, you know, improvement. And I think everybody's forgetting like supply and demand. It's, right. it's a supply and demand issue. Now, if you're in Austin, Texas right now, if you're in New York City right now, there are certain markets in the U.S. today where we might be near oversaturation at certain price points. It's not going to be the starter homes. It's not going to be first time buyer or the mid stuff. But certainly in the higher ends, we're seeing some of that. Um, how, do we, how do we settle the nerves of that buyer without coming across salesy, but it can just the data, the facts, the education. What do you, what do you say in that scenario? Well, I, I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. So if we, if we understand what's underneath that, and I, I think we're, you know, we're talking about a lot of things right now that you just need to have an understanding of. I'm not suggesting that you're going to go break down everything for every buyer and, yes. you know, give them a PhD on this, but here's the first understanding I would have. The biggest difference between today's market and what, again, comparatively what people think of the great financial crisis is then we were in an oversupply of housing in this country, yeah. whereas today we're in an undersupply. 
And I think most people, when they hear that, are like, I understand that. I get that. Here's my question or challenge, maybe, is how good are you at articulating that? Because price is always going to be uh, determined by an element of supply and demand. Right. And so when you start to have these conversations with people, they go, that makes a lot of sense. Right. There's there's not been a market over the last several years that says we have plenty of homes in our market. Now, is that true today? And you mentioned Austin, Texas. Florida is a market where inventory is growing. Sure. There are markets across the country yeah. where they are seeing more inventory, but we're not in a market or, or in a place in, all, in, in most of the country where there is an oversupply, which is then going to our road pricing. Yes. And, and when you talk about with that with, with people, most people get it. And we have the visuals to show new construction and how that was uh, below the 50-year average for the last 14 years. And when you show visuals like that or you're able to have a conversation like that, or again, go back to what you said when we started talking about this, when you produce content or record a video on that, right. people go, okay, I get it. Right. You know, it'd be interesting. You guys have forever used this slide about the, um, about six recessions and the impact right. recessions have on housing prices. And correct me if I'm wrong, of the last six, only two times did home prices go down. One was the correct. early 90s, and it was like a... 3% marginal, like from memory. right? 2.1%. Yeah. Right. Like very, very small. And then of course the, you know, the, the housing, you know, collapse of seven, eight, nine, but what's going through my mind is what a cool KCM visual of those six, right? Those six with, were we over or under supply of inventory during those times leading up right. to or after, I think that'd be a really interesting visual to, for the person that's maybe coming to you with some, Hey, like I'm a, I'm a wall street or I'm a, you know, I, I'm a finance, you know, guy or gal. And I'm, I just know like home, you know, what goes up at that rate's got to come down at that rate. And, and even though common sense is supply and demand, right? Just the fundamentals of supply and demand. I think there's still just a percentage of the population. Not that we're going to ever coerce anybody that like, if there are no, there are no, right? Like you and right, I both know right. that. We're going to do our best to educate them. People are going to do what they're going to do. But I think it'd be a really cool slide to look at that over versus under supply as it relates to those six recessions sort of before, during, and after, just as another anecdotal way to say, look, here's, you're right. Yeah. We've had recessions. Yeah. We've had times where home prices went down. Let's look back over the last six major recessions, here's what happened. But what most people don't look at is were we over or under supplied at that time? And boy, would you have a stark, at least on a national level, again, market by market, you have to look at your own market. We'd have a very stark contrast between those, you know, those home price crunches versus what was happening from supply. I think that'd be interesting. So that's one. I think it's very interesting. I like that idea. And, you know, oftentimes when you and I talk, you're like, hey, what about this? Or what about, what about this right. slide? And I love that. Right. I love it. But here's one thing I have. I, I don't know the data. I don't know it, but I will yeah. make a guarantee on it. Yeah. There will not be a time frame yeah. where inventory was lower than it is today. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, just going to say that. this. I'm just going to say this to my editor who's watching. That's the clip I want posted on Instagram and TikTok and every place else. Cause that's it. <laughs> You're exactly right. So, so let's, let's transition to sellers and let's talk about listings. Um, so what do you, what are you hearing are the biggest concerns of home sellers today? I think of the thousand watt, you know, recent survey, I just asked them to create a new survey kind of getting ready for you and I at summit. So we're going to have a lot more consumer data there, but what are you hearing? And then what is your best advice to be the knowledge broker to, to guide and direct appropriately potential home sellers today? What are you doing August 27, 28, and 29 other than joining me and thousands of others at this year's Success Summit, the 21st year of doing it? And here's where it's all going to start. It's my prediction. I've only made four of them in three decades. My prediction is between now and the end of the year, all the way through 2027, there's going to be absolutely no change. Yes, inventory levels the same. Interest rates, if we are lucky, they'll be in the mid sixes. There's going to be no change except for the changes that you make. And if you're looking to get ahead of the curve, be a forward thinker, spend time with top agents and people that are aspiring to do even more. If you want to learn the very best listing attraction, AI tools, marketing tools, systems and processes to build your business, and most importantly, get some time back because this is the market for the unforeseen future that I encourage you to check out this year's Success Summit.
Yeah, I think the, the there are a couple of things that I would say relative to sellers. One, I um, I believe the second half of this year we will see more activity than the first half. I made that statement um, yesterday. I was talking with Jason Pantana. He's like, <laughs> it was kind of funny because he put me on the spot. He said, why do you believe that? I, I Look at, hey, look at, <laughs> why? <laughs> Immediately, the first question I wrote down in my notes, why? Tell me more about that. So what was your answer? It's very easy. The three forecasters that are, that are most accurate in, in forecast mortgage rates show them coming down mm-hmm. in the second half of the year. Now, I'll give you a couple of quick things about that. First, what would I be watching? Two, what is the reality of the market? And three, what will be the impact? First, the truth about mortgage rates are they are heavily influenced by geopolitical events. Yes. The the run-up that we saw in the last 30, 45 days was because of that. We don't necessarily need the Fed to make a move to see a little bit of relief. Okay, so let's just understand that. Second, inflation massive impact. And there's been this question, is it going back up? Is it, is it, you know, sort of plateaued? Is it coming down? I believe we will, we will start to see, you know, some, some better information on that. And the third is, is the Fed, right? There is a three quarter, 72% chance by those that, that um, follow it right now that they will cut the Fed funds rate in September. Now we'll have to wait and see, but when I start to look at that, that bodes well for mortgage rates. And oh, by the way, forecasters believe sometime by the end of the year we'll be at six and a half. Now we start I fully own. We started off the year saying we think we'll dip our toes in the fives, and yeah. things changed, no doubt. But we'll see a better environment as we go throughout it. Now, second thing, what do I? Know I got to. I got to sure? just say the really fast. Like if. If we see rates in the six, five or lower, the wheels come off. Totally. I'm I'm, I'm just convinced like one, one analysis that every person watching should do, you should go into whether it's prop stream or, you know, one of the, one of the data mining solutions, remind, you know, that's in your MLS and literally do a search query on every home that has a mortgage in your marketplace and get dialed into the data and the truth. What percentage of them are in the twos to three and a half? What percentage are three, six to four? What percentage are four to four or five? Because I'm convinced, David, I know you, you and I have had this conversation that I think the average person is like 200 basis points away from putting their home in the market. Like, like if I'm, if I'm at a four and I can get a six on my next one, it's just a little more palatable for me to make that move than it is going from say 3.5 to 7.5. Like that just feels egregious for most people. So it's going to stop them. So I, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm just convinced of that, but I'm curious your insight. Well, I, I think there's, there's multiple things that play into that. It's not just a financial equation. So I think psychologically people understand the historic mortgage rates that we saw that left 24 months ago. You realize 24 months ago, the rise in mortgage rates was the fastest rise in recorded history. That was two years ago. I know. So we, we've, we've built some time from it and everybody listening is like, I get it. It was two no, years David, ago. No, like, no, 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 David, we're still not over it. <laughs> Every exactly. listener, if you're, wherever like, you're watching this, if you can make a comment, let me know if you're over it. Cause I mean, totally still, fastest rise in the 30 there. year fixed yes. mortgage rate. And people yeah. are like, Hey, look, that was a moment in time. Yeah. If you got it, you got it. Good. Psychologically, people are like, that's not coming back six and a half. I, I would say six and a half, you see really, really good demand. You break below five and and wheels come off. Now, yeah. forecasts on that are about the middle of next year. We'll see what happens, all that. So first is the psychology of it. Yeah. Second, think about this. And I'll give you a couple of things to, to prove this out. One, the life events that have happened in 24 months that people put off a decision to move, to downsize, to up, upgrade, whatever they're doing because of those factors. That will not last forever, right? If you're going to have the second or third child or first child, whatever it is, you're going to make a decision. You might put it off, yep. but you're not going to say, we're not going to do that. 
David, one of the greatest marketing lines, uh, Jimmy, myself, and a bunch of our team clients mastermind came up with was, if the only thing you like about your home is your interest rate, we should right. chat. Right. And it's Absolutely. like everybody paying attention. I hope you wrote down that line. If the only thing you like about your home is your interest rate, we should have a conversation. Now, listen to this. Here's the facts behind it, too. Bright MLS, large you know, MLS here on the, on, on the East Coast, kind of mid-Atlantic area, did a survey at the end of last year. 72% of buyers, listen to this, abandoned their search in 2023 because of mortgage rates because of rising cost. And so, okay, let's back up again. Everything that we're trying to do is to say, what do I see? What do I believe will happen? And then what does that inform my conversations? Okay, I see forecasters saying, you know what, we're in a downward trending rate environment and we'll see, we'll see some relief there. I know surveys are showing me that people kind of said, we don't wanna go there, we're abandoning our search. I know the reality of the psychology then I can be in this posture of, okay, how do I want to engage on that? Right. What information do I want to use? How do I want to talk to people? Because that's, that's what's around the corner. I believe yeah. that with, yeah. and, and I think the, I think we're in a time right now, Tom, we, we were having this conversation this morning where it can be a time where it's hard to expect that. Right. I'm doing everything I need to do. The, there's so much noise in the business, kind of how we started off this podcast. But what do, what do you expect? What do you see around the corner? What's right. over that hill? That's where we sit right now. I'm con overwhelmingly convinced of it. I agree. I mean, everything I'm reading with, you know, again, you and I haven't got a chance to chit chat in probably a month. So we spent a lot of time on the road together. And then I miss yeah. you, David Childers. Um, uh, but you don't have, too, what it makes me think is the the smart listener right now, he or she... I hope this this captivates you. I think you should start a show between now and the end of the year called Rate Watch 2024. And and maybe just, hey, it's Sarah with, you know, Banana Real Estate. It's Rate Watch 2024. Today's date is X. As of right now, a 15-year, a 30-year, a jumbo, la, 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 la. Here's the numbers. And what that means to you if you're buying a $500,000 house, what that means if you're buying a $400,000 house, a $4 million house, and you literally break down the data and the math and then say, if you've got more questions or you want to know that, I'm always here for you. This is Rate Watch 2024, you know, May, whatever. And Love it. Yeah, whether yeah. it's every whether it's every week, I mean, talk about like a meaningful piece of content that you can put out. Cause then you're like, Hey, next week, the CPI report comes out next week. The fed's going to meet. This is what happened. And, and you're the one that's bringing certainly something that's going to be on the minds of every home buyer, every home seller, like what impact is interest rates going to have in this next transaction? I think that'd be a cool piece of content, but I want to take you back to, you said there's basically three forecasters talking about rates. And then you said, but there's three things you got to pay attention to. The first one was what to watch geopolitical, inflation, the Fed, what was two and three? Geopolitical, inflation, the Fed, three things. Okay. That was the three things. I apologize. What are you okay. uh, yeah. Were you combining one of those or? I, I put them all under number one and I was like, okay, that's what to watch. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering, this is a live show. All right. So, so, so go back again. What are the three forecasters predicting between now and the end of the year? What's the, what's sort of the new, if it, if we started the year saying it's the year of the five, and right. Clearly, so I'm looking clearly at it right here. I will share changed. this with you in the show notes and the comments. Yes. You can link to it, yes. whatever. Yes. We can get this cool. to people. Second quarter, uh, um, uh, 2024, third quarter, 6.63 by the end of the third quarter. End of the fourth, 6.43. That's from Fannie. That's from NBA. That's from NAR. That's those that consistently forecast rates. So the, the, the assumption in that is we wrap up the year below six and a half percent. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I, I think the, I think we could do a little bit better than that. Now I'm not going to get, you know, uh, Hey, I think we're going to bust through five or anything like yeah. that. I think that ship has sailed. I want, yes. I want to, I want to be clear on that. Um, but, but I think some improvements in a couple of key things, all here's what, and I think they're intentionally do. I think the Fed is intentionally measuring their words, and that is the business they are in, yes. to yes. not say too quickly, we're out of the woods on this thing. Yeah. 
that's what's happening. That's that's yeah. the reality. But as they hint towards it, as they as they give any lip service to that, we will see an improvement in the thirty year fixed mortgage. So before we talk about the listing challenge, uh, I want to make a statement to you, and I want you to potentially tell me how wrong I am. Okay. I spent last week in Jackson Hole with a group of my, you know, knowledge brokers, coaches, influencers, uh, it, not influencers like dancing on TikTok, like people that are influential and asking a lot of questions. And the the overarching sort of beginning of the summit is this is the market for the next three years. Plan on rates in the sixes for the next three years. Plan on no more inventory than we probably have right now for the next three years. And and just consider a massive wave of people that desperately want to buy a house and affordability is going to be a factor. There's going to be absolutely no change. This is the market for the next three years. Suck it up, buttercup. This is your time to shine. This is your time to be the knowledge broker. And if you hate this market, dare I say, it might be time for you to hang it up because this is the market for the next three to four years. Yeah, am I, get, am I, I, I don't, wrong? I'm not do listening you to you saying I think you're dramatic you're 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 incorrect in that. I, I think you're more right than wrong. Now I do believe, you know, in in what we will see, we will see incremental improvement in our business over the next three years. Meaning I think we'll see each year a little a little bit more home sales. Right. I think we'll see a little bit better uh, environment, a uh, better lend lending environment. So I think those factors will play in, but here's the, the 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 bigger thing that I think about a lot of times is if you hear that statement and it causes a little bit of heartburn or it causes a little bit of panic or challenge, why is that? Right. And it's because we're coming out of a market that was anything but that. We're getting into the reality of, of our business. And I think it's a it's it's a it's a 36 month outlook, Tom, that is that is reality. Yes. Right. That is 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 re requires you to be the knowledge broker. The market in the past several years didn't require that. But I I, I think I think we'll see incremental improvement, but I do not think we're gonna see overnight this, you know, no. this is going to happen and, and something dramatic is going, going to be different. The, the phrase that keeps going through my mind is we're going from speed to skills, speed to skills, speed to skills. Like we're going from a speed market. We got to write an offer fast. You got to get it on the market. We got to write an offer. We gotta hurry, 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 hurry to, to now we got to slow down, have a strategy, have a plan for buyers, have a plan for sellers, speed to skills. That's the degree of separation today. So again, I, I was hoping I was wrong, David. I, I really was, but I just, I don't see any other path other than Hey, this is kind of 1993 to like 1996 or seven. It you know home prices weren't going down, but man, it was a kind of a slugfest market. Nice houses and nice neighborhoods still sold with multiple offers, you know. But it just wasn't the speed that people got accustomed to. It's it's you know we're just it just is what it is. The best I think it's the best there's will one thing I would add to the, yeah. to the speed to the skills conversation. Yes. It, it is moving from speed velocity. The market velocity was tremendous. Yes. You know, I was looking back at a graphic um, earlier today where there were so many months where new inventory outpaced existing inventory in this country. Like we, we literally couldn't bring homes to market fast enough before they, you know, got sold and everybody knows about that. Now we, we sit in the point where we sit right now where things are on the market a little bit longer. Things are, you know, um, are, the velocity in the market is not, not as fast. So moving from speed to skills requires you to be what, what we talk about on the front end consistent with the application of those skills. Yes. So I, th I think there's been a time in our business where you can go out and do something or you can, you know, produce a piece of content or talk about something, but it's consistently doing that. It's consistently coming up with, okay, what do my buyers need to hear here? What do my sellers need to hear? What does my database need to hear? And having a discipline of doing that on a consistent basis. Yes. So lot to unpack here. And we're 30, 36 minutes in. I want to be mindful of the listener's time. By the way, wherever you're listening, 
Will you make a comment? You give, give us some feedback, whether you're listening to this on a podcast or maybe take a photo of it if you're in your car, post it on social, tag David, tag myself, tag Keeping Current Matters. Let us know what your thoughts are on the next three years. I'd be super curious to get your input. Uh, and I will be watching. So David, you, myself, and, and several others, I'm trying to think of when I called you on this. I called on like, David, I got this crazy idea. And I'm like, I don't see a solution anytime soon to more inventory. So, you know, do we have an inventory problem or do we have a lack of communication problem? Do we have an inventory problem or do we have a lack of marketing problem? Do we have an inventory problem or is everybody just doing the same dumb stuff? And I'm not being, being rude over and over again and not being a little more thoughtful about where the customer is at this time. And, and you know, last year, uh, myself and Jimmy Mackin, we got together at the summit and we're like, hey, let's do what we think could be one of the largest, you know, across all brands test around listing attraction. We ended up with a little more than 2,300 of our coaching members participated. They booked close to 19,000 listing appointments from September 15th to December of last year. One could argue depending upon where you were in the country, one of the hardest hundred days in real estate in a long, long time, probably since 2009 or 10, maybe 11. Um, it was a rough for fourth quarter. And yet this group jumped on a couple of Zooms with Jimmy and I, and we said, here's a campaign. Here's a direct mail piece. Here's an email. Here's a social. And, and they were like nice layers, like a good, you know, piece of lasagna. They, you know, they weren't disjointed. It was like, this is the thesis of the campaign. This is what we know works. Here it is in email. Here's it in text. Here it is in direct mail. Here it is in a letter. And here's a script. And, and we introduced these concepts. The group goes out and books like 19,000 listing appointments. They list and sell 7,404 listings documented and put nearly 11,000 buyers in escrow. We're talking about a small subset of our clients that really dug deep, did a little additional work above and beyond what they were normally doing and did just shy of seven and a half billion dollars in commissions. So I'm watching this test and I'm thinking, okay, we're onto something. And you know me, I am a big thinker. I've got a big heart. I, my wife says that I have an enormous capacity to care. And I said, what if, what if we helped as many agents as we can around the world by doing the same exact thing for free, F-R-E-E -E free, could we help 10,000 agents list 10 more houses? Could we help 50,000 agents list more houses? Could we help 100? Could we, could we provide on a monthly basis a marketing drop for free to 100,000 agents that can all list 10 more houses and add a million additional listings to the market. And I called you and you were like, it's crazy, I love it. I called my, you know, my friends at realtor.com, they're like, that's insane. I called two of my mentors and they were like, you know, don't put a crazy guarantee on that because you can't promise that people are gonna execute. I'm like, no, I just want to help. So we created this thing called the Listing Challenge Keeping, you know, keeping Curse Matters a part of it. I'm a part of it. Palm Agents a part of it. F and F, the parent company is a part of it. Realtor.com is a part of it. If you haven't heard about it, go to thelistingchallenge.com. If this is appealing to you, we're going to start sometime around June. I think it's 21st. I'm not going to ask for a lot of time. I'm just going to say show up on a Zoom for maybe 22 minutes to 30 minutes to talk. This is the campaign. Go execute. We need to track and measure the numbers. But I'm, I'm convinced, David, not only is it the right thing to do, but like all my, all my besties are like, yeah, you're going to give me a bunch of campaigns for free and all I have to do is go execute a bunch of the, the a bunch of the, like the, the people that just lurk around my content, like maybe, maybe, you know, they'll jump in and execute and get a little bit more, but I get really excited about like some of the veterans in the marketplace that have been doing this for a long, long time that have these, these untapped assets called their database that they don't know the emails to send. They, they're sending just listed and just sold cards, which are the stupidest marketing on earth at a time. Like the word, let me, let me explain the worst marketing on the planet listed and sold in three days with seven offers. That is the dumbest marketing on the planet. Like you want to talk about a reason why consumers like go agents make too much money. It's that dumbass postcard. Right. Right. But if you start sending things like curious about your neighbor, or did you hear about your neighbor? Or let me share with you the story, go to this QR code, watch and imagine like 
there's just so much better marketing to do. And Jimmy, myself, and Jason, and so many of my other coaches have all piped in and said, we'll give it all away for free. So, so what advice do you have, assuming that the person listening to this is like, okay, I'm in, what else do they need to prepare for in order to be successful? Gosh, I think the, the thing that was in my mind as you were saying that is now is the time to be out and be active in the market. We need to be out. Yes. You know, I, I think understanding what the dynamics are, the mar- are in the market and then how to leverage them. So I'll, I'll give you an example uh, of something that um, I've thought, thought a lot about. And, and I think the, um, the, the campaign that you did this fall was built on some of this content, but the biggest card that any seller has to play right now is the equity they have in their home. Yes. Right. So yes. By by far, that is the the biggest advantage they have in the market. Now let's go back to what we talked about before. Talk about the second half being being uh, busier than the, than the first half. We talk about being out in, in the market, visible because of all the noise and everything yes. that's out there. Yes. Okay. If I understand this, how do I then engage people? So I think being prepared because we sit here in the midpoint of the year. And the question is, are you going to be ready when that time arrives? So to me, the timing of this is perfect because it sets us up for that in the fall. 100%. Um, I'm excited for it. I am too. And and again, for my friend, excuse my enthusiasm. Um, I... uh, in my, in my three decades, I've had a couple moments where I just knew, David, the right thing is the right thing is the right thing. And this is one of them. And I can just imagine a world where a large number of really smart agents. And by the way, do you want to hear some interesting stats before I, before I say these, this large number of agents go out and doing the work? Um, talking to my buddies over at f and And I, while I was preparing last week for the summit, I asked a question after one of my coaches shared how she was able to take the first five listings of 2023 and how those five listings got her 40 more listings. And, and she's describing this as this one of the talks that we'll be delivering in August at the summit this year. And it's this fascinating sort of viral approach to take a listing, get more listings, take a listing, get more listings. And so I immediately text my buddy and I'm like, hey, can you pull up 2023 data I want to know, here was my first question. How many agents listed a house last year? How many agents listed zero to four? How many agents listed five to 44? Then I wanted to know how many agents listed 10 to 20. Then I wanted to know how many agents in the U.S. in 2023 listed more than 45 houses. Now, you you follow me on Instagram. I will. I talked about it in my stories. I want to just find the numbers here really fast so I don't screw this up. Um, 197,000 agents in the U.S., David, last year listed between five and 44. So now you can already figure out the balance, the balance of 1.55 million agents in the U.S. got less, got zero to four, right? So we didn't know that that number is 1.35 million-ish and change. What was more interesting was, and again, I've got to make sure that, that this number just because I'm, I'm doing this from memory. So in fairness, you know, I'm, I'm editing myself, but I'll just, I'll give you sort of anecdotally what I recall and I'll get the exact number. Maybe we'll edit this video. Um, Brian, no editing. I'll just be wrong if I'm wrong. The number of agents that took between 10 and 20 listings last year was like sub 48,000. The number of real estate professionals last year in 2023 that listed more like 10 to 20 houses, sub 48,000. And the remarkable number that I had to literally, I rubbed my eyes, David, three times. I'm looking on my iPhone. I'm looking at this report and I'm thinking to myself, that can't be true. Last year in 2023, the number of agents or teams, right? Because, you know, whatever, but let's uh, under one MLS ID that had more than 45 listings was 5,238 agents. 5,238 agents listed more than 45 houses and 197,000 listed between five and 44. And the balance got zero to, you know, nothing to three or four. It's like, what it tells me is the best are getting better, but even the best know every 18 months, if you don't add a new marketing campaign, a new approach, go after a new market, try something new, you get stale. And everybody else knows, hey, if the play you're running isn't getting you enough listings, go to thelistingchallenge.com. Like race, 
race. Stop watching this show, race over there, get involved, and let's you and I work together to help more people make their move this year and next year. And regardless of market conditions, regardless of the next three years, if the market is the market, you be a better listing agent and everybody wins. Closing Absolutely. thoughts, David, because I'm totally yeah, fired up. Listen, right I'm fired up about it just hearing you talk yes. about it. I'm ready to go. Me too. And, and my goal on that every single time we come together is to say, this is what's happening in the market. This is what we need to be talking That's about right. in, in building off that. So I'm, I'm excited. Love it. All right. Well, for my friend listening or watching, uh, I want your feedback. I want your comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, thank you always for just being you. If there's a buddy or two you need to send this to, I would certainly encourage that. If you're a friend who got this from somebody else, that person cares about you. So watch this show twice and let's be the knowledge broker. David, you know how grateful I am always for our friendship, for Bill, for God bless Steve and the entire team at Keeping Current Matters for doing what you guys do for such a small amount of money every single month compared to my Ivy Zellman bill or John Burns <laughs> and everybody else. And you're exactly right. Just keepingcurrentmatters.com. KCM, try kcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry. I think that still that's works. That's right. That's I right. I believe yeah, that yeah. still works. All right. I will talk to you soon. And for my friend out there watching and listening, God bless you. Have a killer start to the second half of the year. Do the work, my friend. Do the work. God bless. God bless.